differential equations for undergraduate students. Today's topic is solution of Dirichlet problem. We are discussing about three dimensional Laplace equation. We had seen that if our boundary conditions are given on cylindrical surfaces or spherical surfaces, we could change our problem from the Cartesian coordinates to the cylindrical coordinates or spherical coordinates. In the last lecture, we have changed our problem that is the three dimensional Laplace equation into spherical coordinates and we had seen that if our boundary condition is given on this sphere of radius r this s and then we had changed our uh, Laplace equation into spherical coordinates as del by del r of r square del u by del r plus 1 upon sin phi del over del phi sin phi del u over del phi plus 1 upon sin square phi u theta theta is equal to 0. Now, if the boundary condition on this that is the Dirichlet problem says is the boundary condition is defined on the boundary uh, that is the sphere s only. If the boundary condition defined on this sphere s is independent of theta that is let us say if it is u r theta phi is equal to f phi which is independent of theta, then we do expect that the solution of this boundary, this uh, uh, equation would be also independent of theta. If that is independent of theta, that is it would not be u r theta phi, but only u r phi that says is that the term u theta theta would be 0. So, we will change our partial differential equation as del by del r of r square del u over del r plus 1 upon sin phi del over del phi sin phi del u over del phi is equal to 0 with boundary condition as u r theta phi is equal to f phi and as r is, is uh, uh, this point r that is r is approaching to infinity u r phi is approaching to 0. We have called this problem that is this partial differential equation with this boundary condition and this initial condition you could say or boundary condition. We have got that this is called the Dirichlet problem. Today we will learn how to solve this Dirichlet problem in spherical coordinates. So, let us see is that is move to the solution of Dirichlet problem. We do have the partial differential equation in r and phi. The boundary condition is given on a sphere of the radius r u r theta phi is equal to f phi which is independent of theta. So, we do expect the solution to be and another condition is u r phi is approaching to 0 as r is approaching to infinity. So, we will take the uh, solution of this using the separation of variables or the product method. Since we are saying is that the solution would be depending upon r and phi only. So, we will take the u r phi as the product of two functions g r and h phi. Then the partial derivative of u with respect to r would turn out to be the simple ordinary derivative of g with respect to r and h as a constant there it would remain as such and partial derivative of phi would turn out to be the ordinary derivative of h and g r remaining as same. So, now if I take the first partial derivative with respect to r we would get d g upon d r times h phi. The second derivative with respect to r partial derivative of u we would get d 2 g over d r 2 into h phi. Similarly, for phi we would get g r multiplied with d h over d phi and g r multiplied with d 2 h over d phi 2. So, now if I substitute these derivatives in this equation and divide it by g h that is u r phi. So, for let us first write this equation in more simpler form as it would be r square del 2 u over del r 2 plus 2 r times del u over del r plus del by del phi sin phi that is it would be uh, 1 upon sin phi sin phi cancel it out and we will get del 2 u over del phi 2 plus cot phi the derivative of sin phi is cos phi. So, cos phi upon sin phi cot phi times del u over del phi is equal to 0. Now, substitute del 2 u over del r 2 del u over del r from this u r is equal to g r into h phi. We would get r square g double dash because what we would be getting is del 2 u over del r 2 as g double dash r that is the derivative of g with respect to r into h phi. Now, we are dividing it by g into h. So, we would be getting it 
g double dash upon g plus 2 or g dash by g that is where this g double dash and g dash means they are derivative of the g r with respect to r the second derivative and the first derivative. Then here we would get it h double dash upon h and here we would get cot phi times h dash upon h that we are taking on the right hand side. So, we do get it r square g double dash upon g plus 2 r times g dash upon g is equal to minus of h double dash upon h plus cot phi times h dash upon h. Of course, this g is function of r only and h is the function of phi only and here also we are having the coefficients also as r and phi the r function of phi only. So, we do get this left hand side is a function of r and the right hand side is a function of phi. So, if they are remaining to be equal if uh, according to this equation that says is they must be equal to some constant say k. Now, equating these two we do get as usual method we have done in many partial differential equations that we do get two ordinary differential equation. One is from here r square g double dash plus 2 r g dash minus k g that is g we are taking this side and the other one would be h double dash plus cot phi h dash plus k h. So, we are getting two ordinary differential equations r square g double dash plus 2 r g dash minus k g is equal to 0 and h double dash cot phi h dash plus k h is equal to 0. Now, see the first equation. Here the unknown variable is uh, that variable is r and the unknown function is g. So, this is equation uh, which is in g and r. If you do try to remember we are getting is this equation where the second order linear equation where the coefficients are r to the power r square and r so on. So, this is we do know this is famous Euler Cauchy equation. Now, the solution of this equation would be simpler if I take this constant k to be of a special form. So, let us say k is n into n plus 1 then what this equation will become? This equation will become r square g double dash plus 2 r g dash minus n into n plus 1 times g is equal to 0. We do know that if you uh, you have to remember it that is we have done this Euler Cauchy equation. The solution of this equation are assumed to be of the form r to the power m. So, we take the solution of the form r to the power m that says is g dash would be m times r to the power m minus 1 and g double dash would be m into m minus 1 times r to the power m minus 2. If I substitute this that is if this is a solution they must satisfy this equation. So, if I substitute this in this given equation what we would get it simply m into m minus 1 times r to the power m minus 2 into r square that is r to the power m plus 2 times m into r to the power m again r and r and r to the power m minus 1 minus n times n plus 1 r to the power m is equal to 0. Since r to the power m we are saying is a solution, so it would not be 0 for all r. So, what we say is that the coefficient that is r to the power m if I do take common the coefficient must be equal to 0 and that gives me auxiliary equation. What would be that coefficient? m square minus m plus 2 m minus n square minus n that is we would be getting is m square plus m minus n square plus n. So, making it more uh, simplified form the auxiliary equation is coming out as m minus n times m plus n plus 1 is equal to 0. The root of this auxiliary equation from here is very clear that is one would be n another root would be minus n minus 1. So, these are the roots of this auxiliary equation that says this now we are getting the two solutions of this uh, second order ordinary differential equation which is Euler Cauchy equation one is as given as r to the power n and another would be r to the power minus n minus 1 r 1 upon r to the power n plus 1. Now, we are using two different solutions we are taking one solution as uh, denoting it as g n r another as g n star r. Here n is arbitrary what we have taken we have taken this n to be this k to be a special form as n into n plus 1 where n we are taking as integer. So, that we are getting it as a solution in a nice form that is how we are doing it. So, we have got the two solutions for this first equation. Now, let us move to the second equation. Since we have got the solution of the first equation taking k as n into n plus 1 we will move to the 
second equation in the same manner taking k is equal to. So, we will take k is equal to n into n plus 1. Now, this equation is in phi and we are having a coefficient as cot phi, what we would actually make the change of variable over here that is rather than phi, now we would use another variable w which is cos phi. So, what we say is that h of phi would be changing it to say some other function h of cos of phi. So, we would take it that is function h of cos of phi, uh, in that if I change it, so here the derivative h dash with respect to w with, with respect to phi, we have to change it to with respect to w. So, we will go with the uh, our chain rule. So, d h over d phi we could write as d h over d w into d w over d phi. From here d w over d phi would be minus sin phi. So, what we get it minus sin phi d h over d w. Similarly, if I go for the second derivative d 2 h over d phi 2, this is nothing but d by d phi of d h over d phi. d h over d phi is minus sin phi d h over d w. So, let us first differentiate it with respect to phi using the product rule. So, the derivative of minus sin phi is, is minus cos phi. So, we do get minus cos phi d h upon d w minus sin phi times the derivative of d h upon d w with respect to phi. Now, for this we will use the chain rule. So, the first term is as such. For the second term we would be getting is d by d h of d h by d w that is d 2 h over d w 2 into d w over d phi d w over d phi is minus sin phi. So, we will multiply it we get plus sin square phi d 2 h over d w 2. Now, substitute this uh, d 2 h over d phi 2 and d h over d phi in this given equation. So, we change this equation in the variable uh, phi to variable w. We do get minus cos phi d h over d w plus sin square phi d 2 h over d w 2 plus cot phi times h dash that is minus sin phi cot phi d h over d w plus k is n into n plus 1 times h is equal to 0. Now, you see equation we have to get in h and w, we have to remove the terms of phi, cot phi into sin phi, cot phi is nothing but cosine phi divided by sin phi. So, we would get it here cosine phi. So, we will get minus 2 times cosine phi, cosine phi we are saying is w. So, if cosine phi is w, then sin square phi is nothing but 1 minus w square. So, let us rewrite this equation in h and w only sin square phi would be writing as 1 minus w square d 2 h over d w 2 minus 2 cosine phi cosine phi would be w minus 2 w times d h over d w plus n into n plus 1 times h is equal to 0. Now, let us see this equation also we do recognize this we had already done this is a famous legendary equation where we are having is 1 if you do remember that there we have done it 1 minus x square y double dash minus 2 x y dash plus n plus into n plus 1 times y is equal to 0 where n has to be integer. So, now we will treat n as integer. We do know the solution of this Legendre equation is nothing but the Legendre polynomial p n w. Now, w we are saying is cosine phi. So, we will write p n cos phi. So, what we have got ultimately the solution for our partial differential equation u r phi which is g phi into h phi g r into h phi we do get this uh, Legendre uh, polynomial if you do remember that is for your remembrance I am rewriting it over here. It is summation m running from 0 to capital M. Capital M has to be either n by 2 or you could say is the integer value of n by 2 that is if n is even it would be simply n by 2, if n is odd it would be n minus 1 by 2. From minus 1 to minus 1 to the power m into factorial 2 n minus 2 m upon 2 to the power n factorial m factorial n minus m into factorial n minus 2 m into w to the power n minus 2 m. You see this is a polynomial of degree n. we had when m is equal to 0, the degree would be n, when m is n by 2 or uh, n minus 1 by 2, we would be getting it running over there that is the degree that uh, power of w would be 0. So, this is a polynomial of degree n. 
So, the solution finally, we have got the solution of the Laplace equation as g n r into h n cos phi which is h n cos phi is actually p n cos phi. So, we have got u n r phi as a n times r to the power n p n cos phi where I am using the first solution g n r as r to the power n and for that we are using the uh, coefficient arbitrary co uh, constant a n. Now, because we do not for the Legendre polynomial the arbitrary constant we already choose as 1. So, we do choose it here as a n or we can say another solution if I use instead of g n if I do use g n star I would get let us say another solution u n star r phi as b n upon r to the power n plus 1 times p n cos phi. So, we have got now two solutions for our Laplace equation. So, now we have to find out the solution of Richlet problem that is we have to satisfy the boundary condition. Boundary condition says is u r phi is f of phi at r is equal to capital R a fixed radius. Now, we see is that is here this solution u n r u n star they are depending upon an arbitrary integer n. So, to get that is satisfy the boundary condition we would use this Fourier method for solving uh, Richlet problem using the boundary condition. So, we will use the solution of Laplace equation by Fourier method. The boundary condition first we have been given is u r theta is equal, u r theta phi is equal to f phi. Now, since uh, if you do remember we are talking about that is our boundary is a surface of the sphere. Surface of the sphere that it says is that we have to find out we have got that Richlet problem uh, in the last lecture we have got that it is a uh, example is that is calculation of potential at the temperature uh, inside the boundary and outside the boundary. So, let us first talk about the inside the boundary that is what we are calling interior problem. So, let us first find out the solution of interior problem that is we will get u r phi at all those r which are inside the sphere r that r is less than or equal to capital R. For that case uh, we would use our solution from the first solution u on r phi. Since my Laplace equation is again a second order linear equation homogeneous equation we can use the uh, um, principle of superposition principle and that is fundamental result and we can have our solution as summation n is running from 0 to infinity u n r phi where u n r phi is nothing but a n times r to the power n into p n cos phi. So, we have got is that let us say the solution is u r phi is n is equal to 0 to infinity a n r to the power n p n cos phi. Now, for this we would satisfy over this boundary condition this solution we are saying is that is for r less than or equal to r. So, boundary condition means at r is equal to r if I write it out this solution that this r has to change to this capital R this is a fixed value the radius of the sphere n is running from 0 to infinity a n r to the power n p n cos phi this must be equal to f phi. Now, what it says is we have to find out this a n this constants such that this is satisfied what is this what we are saying is this function f phi is represented by an infinite series where this infinite series is actually consisting of this is a constant this is a fixed value r to the power n p n cos phi p n cos phi this is the Legendre polynomial that is what we are having polynomials of degree n. So, as n is varying we would be having polynomials in cos to the power n or again we are getting is Fourier kind of polynomial. So, what we are calling they are Fourier series of course, we would get the series in the terms of cosine terms. Uh, powers of cosine phi, but we have those uh, special form that is rather than having only as the powers of cos and sine we are having them as p n cos phi that is the Legendre polynomial in cos phi. This we would call Legendre Fourier series. Uh, this uh, has been a uh, little bit you could obtain if you just say is that is since my uh, in the Legendre polynomials you have done that Legendre polynomials are orthogonal that says is in this way the representation can be done. If you do remember that in Sturm-Lavalier problems we have done that is 
those eigen functions were uh, orthogonal then we can present any function in the series form of the orthogonal function. So, in that manner we could actually represent it and using those kind of results here I would not go in the detail I would simply say is that is a n times r to the power n from here can be given as the coefficient 2 n plus 1 upon 2. So, this r to the power n from here I am taking this, this one integral 0 actually this is orthogonal on the minus 1 to plus 1 if you do remember that is p n w. So, I could say is integral minus 1 to plus 1 p n w into f dash w f dash w what we are saying is f phi if I change my variable from phi to cosine phi as w. So, let us say is that uh, function f phi can be given as f dash of w then f dash of w p n w d w integral minus 1 to plus 1 that should be uh, ideally my coefficient. Now, since w is we are taking as cosine phi. So, if I change the variable my d w would change to minus sin phi cosine phi and the range that is the limit minus 1 to plus 1 minus 1 will take phi that is w as minus 1 will take phi as pi and w as plus 1 will take phi as 0 and since minus cos sin phi d phi that we would be getting as dw using the properties of definite integral we could write it as 2 n plus 1 upon 2 to the power 2 into r to the power n integral 0 to pi f phi p n cos phi sin phi d phi. So, what we have got we have got the solution of the interior problem, problem r u r phi at for all r less than or equal to r that inside the boundary as a series summation n is running from 0 to infinity a n r to the power n p n cos phi where a n is being given by 2 n plus 1 upon 2 into r to the power n into integral 0 to pi f phi p n cos phi sin phi d phi where f phi is actually the boundary condition which is independent of theta. Now, we see from here if my r is greater than r or if I take r approaching to infinity certainly this will never approach to 0 because we would be we are having is r to the power n and n is an integer which is greater than 0. So, this will never approach to 0 that is the condition the another boundary condition which says is u r phi is approaching to 0 as r is approaching to infinity cannot be obtained from this solution that is if r is greater than r equal to r outside the boundary that is outside the sphere this cannot be treated as a solution. So, that problem that is uh, getting the solution u r phi at all the points which are outside the sphere that we would call exterior problem and for that this solution would not work. So, let us see the solution of exterior problem. Let u r phi is now another solution we are taking if you do remember the g n is star we are taking 1 upon r to the power n plus 1. So, there we would get if r is approaching to infinity that 1 upon r or 1 upon r to the power n would approach to 0. So, we will treat take this g n star that is now we are assuming our solution u r phi as taking summation n is running from 0 to infinity b n upon r to the power n plus 1 p n cos phi. Now, satisfy the boundary condition that at r is equal to capital R that is at the this one the boundary condition if we do satisfy. So, this solution we are taking for r greater than r equal to r. Now, the boundary condition is that r is equal to r u capital R theta phi should be f phi. Try to satisfy this boundary condition for this solution we do get it as 0 to infinity b n upon capital R to the power n plus 1 p n cos phi is equal to f phi that is again we are getting f as a series of Fourier Legendre series you could say. So, again using the same similar manner we could get b n upon r to the power n plus 1 as integral minus 1 to plus 1 p n w d w uh, and f p n w into f dash w d w where uh, my uh, w is cosine phi and the constant we would get 2 n upon 2 n plus 1 upon 2. So, again changing it to in the similar manner in the phi we do get 
2 n plus 1 upon 2 into r to the power n plus 1, because now we would be getting b n upon r to the power n plus 1. So, this would go this side into r to the power n plus 1 integral 0 to pi f phi p n cos phi sin phi d phi. So, we have got this solution for uh, all n 0, 1, 2 and so on. We have got now the solution of the exterior problem that is you could say potential at uh, all the points which are outside the boundary that is outside the sphere. We do get it as uh, b n upon r to the power n plus 1 p n cos phi where b n is been given by this constant as 2 n plus 1 upon 2 r to the power n plus 1 integral 0 to pi f phi p n cos phi sin phi d phi where f phi is nothing but the boundary condition that is the function which has been given as the boundary condition. Now, let us see one example that is how this uh, uh, thing can be applied. Find the potential inside and outside a spherical capacitor consisting of two metallic hemispheres of 1 feet radius separated by a small slit for insulation. If the upper hemisphere is kept at 110 volts and the lower is grounded. So, now we have to find out the potential inside and outside the spherical capacitor while we have been given the temperature has been kept at uh, this uh, uh, volts has been kept as 110 volts and uh, in the upper hemisphere and the lower hemisphere we have been it has been grounded. So, let us see in the figure that is how this would this boundary condition would look like this says is there is a sphere. So, this upper sphere is at the 110 volts and the lower sphere we are having is it is 0 and there is a slit between these two spheres. Now, what this uh, it says simply that I because our boundary condition is given on the surface of the sphere. So, we can uh, and we have to find out the potential inside and outside the sphere that is we have to solve the interior problem as well as the exterior problem. We have to find out any point x y z inside this sphere and what is potential at that point and any point outside this sphere what is the potential over there. So, this we do know that this potential problem is nothing but three dimensional Laplace equation with the boundary conditions. We do know that since my boundary conditions are been given on the or the boundary is given as a surface of the sphere, we would look move to the spherical coordinates. If we are moving to the spherical coordinates, just see uh, reminding that is what we mean by spherical coordinates. These x, y, z are our Cartesian coordinates. If we are moving to this spherical coordinates, then uh, we do have r is that the uh, distance from the origin to any point whether it is inside or outside what wherever this any point in this space that is we are having is uh, that is r and theta is the angle which we would say is in this is in the x y plane that is whatever the cross section the circle it is making this is theta. So, if I take r is running from minus 1 to plus 1 that is the minus r to plus r or minus 1 to plus 1 because here the radius is being taken as 1 feet. So, it should be 0 to 1 here and uh, minus 1 to plus 1 and theta is over here, then we see is that this phi we would be saying is that is to be going only for this sphere as 0 to pi. So, for hemisphere we would get uh, this phi is from 0 to pi by 2 only and uh, for the another hemisphere we would have that is the upper hemisphere 0 to pi by 2 and the lower hemisphere phi would range from pi by 2 to pi what it says is that my boundary condition which has been given that is upper hemisphere is kept at 110 volts and the lower is grounded that says is now my boundary condition is not depending on theta we would be getting is it is a constant for phi ranging from 0 to pi by 2 and it is another constant from pi by 2 to pi. So, we can very well assume that our boundary condition is free of uh, theta. So, we could say is u r theta phi is f of phi and then the solution we would assume is that would be also independent of theta that is we could move to the, the problem just now we had solved. So, first we will change the problem that is three dimensional Laplace equation into a spherical one as usual we have done it del upon del r r square del u upon del r plus 1 upon sin phi del upon del phi sin phi del u over del phi plus 1 upon sin square phi u theta theta is equal to 
0. Since uh, the boundary condition is given on this sphere as we have just now seen is that is that says is that it should be independent of theta it should depend only on phi. So, we say is that boundary condition is u r theta phi is equal to f phi which is a function has been given as 110 for the phi ranging from 0 to pi by 2 and 0 for pi by 2 to pi. That says is my solution would be independent of theta that says u theta theta would be 0. So, we will come back to the equation r square d 2 u over d r 2 plus 2 r times d u over d r plus del 2 u, uh, u upon del phi 2 plus cot phi times del u over del phi is equal to 0 with the boundary condition u r theta phi is equal to f phi which has been given by this function 1 10 at the uh, phi ranging from 0 to pi by 2 and 0 for phi ranging from pi by 2 to pi and this would uh, lead to the and the other condition we would be requiring is that is uh, the potential outside this one. So, if r is very far away certainly u r phi must be 0. So, we say is that the other condition we would assume as. Uh, so, we will come to the our Drisselet problem del upon del r r square del u over del r plus 1 upon sin phi del over del phi sin phi del u over del phi is equal to 0 with u 1 comma theta comma phi as 110 for phi ranging 0 to pi by 2 and 0 for phi ranging from pi by 2 to pi and u r phi is approaching to 0 as r is approaching to infinity. So, this is our known Drisselet problem for which just now we had got the solution. The solution we have got as the 2 that is since here also in this example we have to find it out inside the sphere and outside the sphere. So, inside the sphere so solution of interior problem we had find it out was u r phi summation n is running from 0 to infinity a n r to the power n p n cos phi where a n was decided by the boundary condition and the constant was defined as 2 n plus 1 upon 2 to the power 2 into r to the power n integral 0 to pi f phi p n cos phi sin phi d phi. Now, here f phi is nothing but this constant between the range 0 to pi by 2 and 0 in the range 0 pi by 2 to pi. So, for evaluation of this a n we would have to evaluate the integral from 0 to pi by 2 only. So, let us first evaluate this integral a n 2 n plus 1 upon 2 r was 1. So, r to the power n would vanish it would come as 1 function f phi is constant in the range 0 to pi by 2 that is f phi is 110 integral is now 0 to pi by 2 since 110 is constant we are taking it outside the integral sign p n cos phi sin phi d phi. Now, let us move to this what is p n cos phi we would evaluate this integral 0 to pi by 2 p n cos phi sin phi d phi again we will assume cos phi as w. So, minus sin phi would minus sin phi d phi would be d w and at 0 the uh, cos 0 would be 1 and cos pi by 2 is 0. So, we would get it 0 to 1. So, again in that manner we would write all these things and p n w we would if you do remember we have got this polynomial of n degree if uh, m is running from 0 to m the summation minus 1 to the power m factorial 2 n minus 2 m upon 2 to the power n factorial m factorial n minus m factorial n minus 2 m into w to the power n minus 2 m. So, now we will substitute p n w instead of p n w we would substitute this one and instead of phi we would change the variable to w. So, the range is 1 to 0 and since it is minus sin phi. So, we would get 0 to 1 and what we would be getting now 2 n plus 1 100 by 110 by 2 that is 55. So, 55 into 2 n plus 1 we are again making is that the summation sign and the integral sign can be interchanged that is we could say is that the uh, uh, this uh, interchange is possible if we say the series is a uh, uh, uniform convergence and all those things. So, we are assuming all those uh, niceties, uh, niceties of the mathematics are being holding true over here. So, we can make it out. 
So, summation m is running from 0 to capital M minus 1 to the power m. All these are constants, so we can take outside the integral sign factorial 2 n minus 2 m upon 2 to the power n factorial m factorial n minus m factorial n minus 2 m integral 0 to 1 w to the power n minus 2 m d w. Now, this integral would be certainly w to the power n minus 2 m plus 1 upon n minus 2 m plus 1 which is evaluated from 0 to 1 will result only 1 upon n minus 2 m plus 1. So, if I am adding it 1 minus uh, 1 upon n minus 2 m plus 1 that will add it n minus 2 m into n minus 2 m plus 1 we would simply say it would be factorial n minus 2 m plus 1. So, finally, what if I substitute these things what I would get a n I would be getting is as 55 into 2 n plus 1 as such summation m is running from 0 to capital M capital M means is the integral value consisting in n by 2 minus 1 to the power m 2 n minus 2 m factorial upon 2 to the power n factorial m factorial n minus m factorial n minus 2 m plus 1. This is the constant a n we have got. Now, for n is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on this is what is our constant. So, let us try to find out certain values. If I take n is equal to 0, n is equal to 0 says is that is capital M will also come out to be 0 that is the summation is only on the single value when m is equal to 0. m is equal to 0 means is here up n is 0. So, this is factorial 0, factorial 0 we do know is that we take it as 1, 2 to the power 0 is 1, this is 0, this is 0, this is 1. So, what we do get it simply here 1 n is 0. So, here also. So, we will get simply a naught as 55. Similarly, if I go for n is equal to 1, n is equal to 1 means is uh, 1 is odd number. So, this m will not go till 0 that is again we would be having only single point at m is equal to 0. Here n is equal to 1. So, it would give me 3 into 55 and what we will get from here here we would be getting is uh, this minus 1 to the power 0 that will give me 1. Here 2 n minus 2 m, m is 0, n is 1. So, it is factorial 2. Here it is fact 2. So, factorial 2 is 2, 2 upon 2. Then this is 0, uh, this is factorial 1, this is factorial 1, uh, this would be factorial uh, 1 plus 1, 2. So, what we would be getting it 1 by 2. So, we would get finally it as uh, 165 by 2 or uh, 82.5 because 55 into 3 would be 165 upon 2. So, 85.2. Similarly, if I go for n is equal to 2, uh, then we have two terms 0 and 1 and uh, we would get uh, the coefficient uh, from both the places you just calculate it. You would get as a as, uh, 2 minus 2 actually for a 2 would be 0. Similarly, for a 3 if I do go I will again get the two terms m is corresponding m is equal to 0 and m is equal to 1. Again calculate all these putting this n is equal to uh, 3 and m is uh, 0 and 1 that is this sum of the two terms or oh, finally, we would get like that we can calculate these coefficients. So, finally, what will be the solution that is what is the potential inside the sphere u r phi is n is equal to 0 to infinity a n r to the power n p n cos phi. Now, a n just now we had calculated as for some values. So, let us just try to write it out 55 that was the a naught r to the power 0 that is 1 p naught cos phi. If you do remember legendary polynomial p naught x is 1 whatever be the x. So, we would get 55 then p 1 cos phi that is cos phi actually uh, you could find it out using those ones. So, this is 82.5 times p 1 cos phi minus 48.125 p 2 times cos phi and so on. Now, uh, from those uh, functions uh, legendary polynomials you had already done you have done that is what is p n x uh, p 1 x p 2 x p 3 x p 4 x like that we, you had already calculated. You can very easily write this series in the terms of cos phi uh, or the powers of 
cos phi and from there what we do have to we can calculate the potential at any point how the series sum series sum certainly is uh, not going to be very easy to find it out unless until we do know what is the convergence and particularly what will be actually this particular series sum. But certainly using certain functions that is uh, nth partial sum that is for some functions uh, for some n as 5, 6 or something we could find out we can approximate the potential at that point at any particular point r. Now, move to the potential at outside the sphere that is solution of exterior problem. We do remember that we had find out the solution of exterior problem not using this uh, a n into r to the power n, but b n upon r to the upon r to the power n plus 1. So, for that the solution was n is running from 0 to infinity b n upon r to the power n plus 1 p n cos phi. Here b n if you do remember we were uh, having 2 n plus 1 upon 2 r to the power n plus 1 0 to pi f phi p n cos phi sin phi t phi. Now, r is in our given problem the radius is 1 feet that is r is 1. So, what I would get is 2 n plus 1 upon 2 times integral 0 to pi f phi p n cos phi sin phi d phi that is same as our a n because why uh, f phi is your constant in the range 0 to pi by 2 and 0 in the range pi by 2 to pi. So, what we do get is 2 n plus 1 upon 2 into 110 0 to pi by 2 p n cos phi sin phi d phi this is same as a n. So, in this our particular problem what we have got that b n and a n are coming as same just now we had calculated that a naught as 55 a 1 as 82.5 a 2 as uh, it should be p 3 a 2 as uh, uh, 0 a 3 as minus 48 point something. So, we do get now the solution outside uh, the sphere that is exterior problem b naught is same as a naught. So, what we are getting is b n upon r to the power n. So, r to the power n plus 1. So, we would get 55 upon r plus a 1 we have got as 165 by 2 upon r square p 1 cos phi minus 385 upon 8 r cube p 3 cos phi and so on. So, what we have got finally actually we have to solve we have to get the potential inside the sphere and outside the sphere what we have got for the inside we have got this series for outside we have got this series. Using this legendary polynomials p 1 x is x p 2 x is x square minus and so on p 3 x is uh, x cube and all those terms we can find out the approximate values at different points r over here and then we can get the approximate solutions. You can check that is with the some uh, as we have done in many our solutions that is we have took the uh, in the Fourier series also we have done is that is uh, calculated the partial sums for uh, n is equal to 3, 4, 5 and so on. So, you can try here with the n is equal to say uh, 5 that is you take the first term, second term uh, this third term because the a 2 is 0. So, this would be a 3 and so on you could go till for uh, first 6 terms and you can check for different values of r. First thing is you could check very easily for if I take r is equal to capital R that is 1 itself my both these solutions would match that is at the boundary r is equal to 1 both these solution would match and there you could check that it would actually approximate our boundary condition. And for different values that is when r is less than 1 we have to use this solution for r greater than 1 we have to use this solution. So, here uh, r has to also come. So, we do get that different solutions that is potential inside and outside. So, today we had learned that is how to solve the Dirichlet problem when the boundary condition is given on a sphere. Similarly, if the boundary condition is given on the cylinder, 
we can change our problem to the cylindrical problem and there using the boundary condition whether it is depending upon z or not and all those things we have to either we can change it to the two variables that is r theta and z either we change it to the r and theta or we change to theta and z and accordingly we can use again the product uh, method that is the method of separation of variable and we can go ahead with the solution. So, the method for solving this partial differential equation that is three dimensional Laplace equation first we are trying to see is that is where the boundary condition is being given. If the boundary condition is given on a some known surfaces that is as a cylinder or the sphere we will try to change our problem to the spherical coordinates or cylindrical coordinates. If the boundary is given on the cubes or this uh, cuboids we could move to the uh, directly to the uh, Cartesian coordinates itself we could solve we could use this uh, uh, problem we could solve this using this product method. So, this spherical and cylindrical coordinates we have taken because of its practical applicability in many engineering problems. So, we have learned how to solve the three dimensional Laplace equation. So, that is all for this today's lecture. Thank you.